The Hungry Ghost of Rue Orleans by Mary Quattlebaum. Fred lived alone at 28 Rue Orleans. Once the house had been a jazzy, snazzy, sweet and spicy spot, but now the floor squeaked, the roof leaked, and dust coated the chairs. But Fred liked his rickety house. All night he moaned and clicked his fingers and tended his tiny cactus. If he got hungry, he gobbled some air. The perfect life for a ghost. One day, Pierre and his daughter Marie barged through Fred's broken door. A new restaurant, they shouted. My house, Fred cried, but no one heard. Pierre banged nails and washed stairs. Marie swept away cobwebs. They polished windows and painted walls. No, Fred wailed, but no one heard. In came tables, chairs, and a giant stove. No more, Fred stomped his wispy foot, but no one heard. Trucks arrived with celery, peppers, and paprika spice, crawfish, onions, red beans, and rice. Then such a noise, chop. Whisk, sss, whisk, chop. One evening, quiet settled over 28 Rue Orleans, and Fred heard a different sound. Clank. Had Pierre and Marie left? Had a new ghost moved in? Fred slipped down the polished stairs past the gleaning stove and clank, clank, clank. Twenty forks rattled like ghost chains. Twenty people shook their napkins, raised their glasses, and dined upon gumbo, crawfish, and red beans and rice. Welcome to our restaurant, Pierre shouted. My house, Fred hollered, but no one heard. Now Fred was tired of no one hearing. This place so horribly spick and span no longer felt like home. His beloved dust gone, his squeaks and leaks gone, his cobwebs gone. Who had invited these munchers and clankers? They needed to go. And before you could say hungry ghost gobbles air, Fred began to moan. Ooh. He tossed the gumbo, splat. He juggled the crawfish, whoosh, whoosh. He flipped the red beans and floated the rice. Flip, flip, flu. The diners cheered. <clears throat> A portly man coughed pompously. I must, I simply must comment on this food and this uh, strange performance. Conti, the critic, he loathed everything. Butterballs, carrot curls, pralines, and pie. Marie held a breath. Fred rubbed his hands happily. He'd soon have his home back for sure. Conti would hate the haunted restaurant. The food is spiced nicely and served up with style. The critic dabbed his lips. But this show, this mysterious show, he threw out his hands, makes this restaurant an outright outrageous five-star success. Conte beamed at Pierre. A ghost makes your restaurant unique. Fred hid behind the stove for the next few nights, but still the diners came. Clank, clank, clank. Enough said Fred sadly. I must find a new home. So he packed his valise and hoisted his cactus. Goodbye, he moaned from the door. But as he turned, his plant pricked Marie. The girl stopped her hurry and scurry. Are you a ghost? What did you expect, said Fred tartly. A floating sheet? I thought you were steam from the kitchen said Marie apologetically. And you speak so softly. Now I can tell you've been here all along. Wait, are you leaving? You took my home, said Fred, opening the door. Pierre whisked by with a special dessert. My masterpiece, he cried. Powdered ghost puffs. Name for me, asked Fred. 
This is the ghost, Marie told her father. We took his home. Oh, no! Pierre dropped the beautiful puffs. Fred caught the tray and... Mm, sniffed. Oh, that smell. That wonderful, powdery, sugary smell. It smelled like 28 Rue Orleans on a bright and busy, jazzy, snazzy day. Fred picked up a dainty puff. Why, it's as light as air, he said. Your house, said Pierre. We are so sorry. Would it be possible to share, asked Marie. Absolutely not. Fred took a teeny tiny bite. I need squeaks and leaks and dust. This place is nothing but clean and gleam and shine. What to do, Marie pondered. Pierre puzzled. Fred nibbled another puff. And another. And another. Whew. He gazed at the last puff. Do I have room for one more? Room for one more, Marie slowly repeated. Then she smiled and dashed up the stairs. For the next three hours, Marie banged and thumped while Pierre kept Fred busy with puffs. Finally, Marie led Fred to the broken door, and he saw the sign. Fred. He could hardly believe his eyes. Dust everywhere. Squeak went the floor. A slow drop dripped from a leak. My own room, cried Fred. Let's celebrate. We're ghost puffs. Marie and Pierre named their restaurant the Hungry Ghost, and 28 Rue Orleans became once again a jazzy, snazzy, sweet and spicy spot. If you ever visit, listen very carefully. Right after the 8 o'clock ghost show, Pierre offers dessert in Fred's private room. What's being served? Powdered ghost puffs, of course. Clank, clank.